Welcome to Mia, the Passion Muse Show. My guest this week is Sharon Ottnisfoot. Welcome, Sharon. Hi, Mia. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. It's such a pleasure to be doing this with you. I'm grateful you were able to join me and the rest of the women on this Feminine Beauty Awakening because what your topic is or what, what your specialty is is so vital to being a woman, but yet we ignore it. And so, oh, oh yes, <laughs> do we ever? So I really am so excited for you to share your plethora of knowledge with us as you um, describe your I mean, life on a natural business, high. right? And so, not all of us get exactly what what it takes to have your temple be completely in tuned. And, and as women, we want to have our femininity brought out and awakened and. I absolutely am so grateful that you're here because when I realized what you did, I was like, I have to have Sharon. Would you on. would you so. please share your journey with us? I'd be happy to. And my journey really started about ten years ago, and um, I I was not living a life at all of honoring myself, my body, my mind, my spirit in the least. I was numbing myself with food and alcohol. And just trying to, to use those things to cope with life that was out of control. Um, I had very little self-awareness. I had very little confidence. I didn't really know how to communicate well um, in a marriage that was going awry. So I took a very scary step and I stopped using alcohol, not knowing how on earth I was going to be able to you know, get through a day um, without that source of coping. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn on these skills. And one of the things that was the best was learning about self-development, personal development, and all those fabulous speakers out there that just opened up a whole new world to me. And I remember thinking, wow, you know, where have these people been in my life? And how do I get more? And, you know, there was also a little, little nidge in there of, I wonder if I could do that someday. You know, what, how amazing would that be? And several years in, I, I actually took a detoxification class, and that really changed my world because suddenly my body was like, whoa, you know, what's this? I mean, how amazing am I starting to feel? And what's that all about? So that took me on another little journey of, oh, I want more. I want to see more. I want to do more. You know, what more can I do to, to make that even better? And people started noticing. They started looking at me going, wow, what are you doing? What's different? You know, how do I do that? And so um, when I moved to L.A., I actually um, went to a, a school. And just I wanted some certification. I wanted to, you know, really get started on this new path the right way so that I could really help people the best. And so now I'm just loving what I'm doing and what I call awakening your body to wellness. That's beautiful. It really is. And our own journey is what what sparks our light and mm -hmm. others see it. And then people, just like they say uh, moths, moths are drawn to, to the light, people are drawn to the light. And so that's right. what they saw. That's beautiful. Wonderful. And so what was your step after you went and took your courses? How did you, well, obviously you started getting clients and working. So share some of that aspect of 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 the idea of detoxing, that really is scary to people. And we do need to detox our body, not just mentally, but physically as well, because it's right. our temple. Well, you know, it's really, I, I've learned, it's, it's one of the most powerful t tools that I can get people started on if they're open to it. You know, sometimes it's all about just taking the little steps, you know, taking a glass of water with some lemon juice. And, you know, some people... People just oftentimes need to start that way. But as they even open their eyes to that, sometimes it's like, oh, well, okay, like, let me know a little more. So if I can take them on that journey of detoxing their body, and what I do is actually take them um, not only eating more whole foods, less processed food, obviously, but also taking away some of the most allergen foods out of their diet. And once those get out of your system, it's amazing what starts to happen with clarity, 
with, you know, less bloating, um, it just your whole body starts feeling different. You start thinking differently. It's, it's quite an amazing journey, and it takes about 21 days. Yeah. So it's not a lifetime. And, right. you know, then you can ease back in, but you, you have more clarity of what your body feels like. Fabulous, right? Mm. Not just... I love that. Yeah, I mean, so many of us walk around in just that kind of... Um, just mm, state, and right. it's like that's all we know. Right. So we assume that's normal for us. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a quote that I I love, and at the moment on air, I can't remember <laughs> precisely, and and um, I can't remember the exact um, well known uh, person who said it. He lived a couple hundred years ago, but it the moment that our mind expands, it can never go back. So when you're sharing this information, it's, it's like, wow, 21 days is nothing. It's a short time to feel what it's like and to, to have our mind expanded so that truly it, our mind never goes back because we can't lose that information of the, of the wow that you just gave women in that cleansing process. Because exactly. from there, as you said, it opens up other doors moving forward. And exactly. That's, that's the beauty of the growth. Wonderful. Yeah, and there's sort of a, a, my little inside um, joke is that uh, I don't really tell people this necessarily, but after that 21 days, there isn't any going back. You don't want to. Right. Why would you want to? Right. You may not go through life perfectly. I sure don't. Yeah. But it's that whole awareness in your mind and your body. Who wants to go back? Right. You want to go forward. Exactly, exactly. Because when you're feeling that essence of that empowerment that you just went through, you don't want to go back. You're, you're awakening your, your womanhood, your beauty to another step that is within our whole temple, our whole body, our being. And that's, that's the beautiful part of it. And start moving different. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just even getting rid of that little belly bloat. And I'm not talking about, you know, losing 25, 30, 40, 50 pounds in 21 <laughs> days. I'm just talking about, you know, sort of like loosening up mm -hmm. that kind of just icky tightness. Mm -hmm. You start moving better. That also would be in our joints as well, correct? Absolutely. The inflammation that Absolutely. certain foods bring that we, some of us are more allergic to than others and, and we don't realize it. I have no idea. You have right. no idea until you get it out of your system that, oh, right. wow, okay, I guess that really isn't the best thing for me to eat. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, and how you track it and all that. Wonderful. Right. And do you find that when you're working with women on the food concept, that there are other aspects of their awakening process, spiritual femininity would come out? They feel better, they want to look better. Their they feel mind, better, they want to look better. Their yes. mind is working better, they're more excited about life. Yes, exactly. In fact, one client that I just kind of finished with, which is always like, so sad to me, um, but she just, I think, was so tickled after maybe their first few sessions where we did deal mostly with food. And then I started asking her other questions, relationship, um, you know, what, what her work life was like, what her spiritual things were. And she was like, you could hear over the phone, she just lit up and said, oh, you mean we get to talk about me? Oh. <laughs> it's like, absolutely, yes. Right. You get to talk all about you mm -hmm. and what you're feeling and how you're feeling. And, and it's... It, it has to happen a little bit into the process because you need to start getting that clarity that your body feeling better, mm -hmm. your mind can feel better, and then you can go forward on your journey, I think, in life. Right, right. And suddenly now she wants to maybe write a book. So, you know. That's wonderful. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah. I love when people just crack open like a, a nut or a ripe watermelon, and it's just they just split and their beauty just starts to pour out. I had a beautiful session um, before we came on set here to film of, of a client who who had cracked open, as we'll say, and it, it it's beautiful when we see others grow. It's amazing, doesn't it? Just yes, it just it's it's because what we're doing is helping the sisterhood, helping other women and men if they if they would like to help, but we're helping people to grow. In, internally by doing the 
some of the external or experiential type of things that, that we're working with them. And, and it's really beautiful when, when we see the progress. And, and it doesn't it melt your heart and it makes you say, this is what I'm made to do. This is what I'm here to do. Absolutely, yeah. positively. It is, there's like no other feeling. And to see somebody going through the process and then realizing not only can they feel better, look better for themselves, but then they can also like, wow, look what I can share with other people people, women, children, you know, it just opens a whole new world of possibility. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. It's very passion based. Yes. So because a lot of women um, who might be watching this are just deciding to experiment, as women we, we feed ourselves and we, we feed ourselves or stuff to hold down certain things that really need to come out. So what are some of the type of foods that you would, I, I saw you had a program advertised for a while about eliminating sugar and things right. like that. And that's not forever, ladies. That's just temporary. And if you want to do it forever, after that, that's fine. But it's wonderful to just experiment and to, and to try it and see what, what blesses your, your body. Right. And especially the, the processed sugars. Um, you know, we're hardwired to love sugar. There's no question about it. And there's reasons that we've always needed some sweet in our life, of course. So it's not about getting rid of all sweetness, but it's about getting rid of especially processed foods, overly processed mm -hmm. foods. So sugar being one of them, um, wheat being one of them, or the glutens, right. dairy products, those kinds of things. That You know, think about macaroni and cheese. Is there a better comfort food out there? I don't think so. That or ice cream. <laughs> you know, but they're again, creamy, they're right. wonderful, sweet. But it gets, dairy. but we can change our thought process because Absolutely. those used to be my favorites and now I can't tolerate them at all because yes. I've programmed myself to know that 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 is not the type of food that, that goes well with my body. Not only does it hurt my tummy, but it also um, makes me feel lethargic and slow. And so when we put our heart and mind together on decisions like that, it's really, really easy. When I, I had lost um, 140 pounds in seven months, no surgery, all on my own, I sort of did a at first a modified Atkins and then I went on a, a, another type of a program. But my sister would say to me, who was always very, very slim, and, and I had gained the weight on purpose, was to keep men away. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I was killing myself, or I was actually told that I was killing myself, that I was dying from a doctor. And so um, when I made that heart-mind connection, there was nothing that could stop me. I thought, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to die. And I, ha I really had to make the change. And my sister said, aren't you eating desserts? And I said, I could lay naked in a giant chocolate cake and have it surround me and I, I don't care to touch it. I just don't care. And now I might have a bite or two of somebody's but you know, but that's it. And that's you know, it's just it becomes a, a thought pattern and process in our body. Our body doesn't crave it when we eliminate right. that stuff. It's, and I love that. Well, and also, I think that you, you know, it sounds like also you've learned new coping skills. There's other, re you know, other things you go to mm -hmm. than that food. Right. You know, I think if you can gain a, another kind of a spiritual practice of meditation, a yoga, breathing, you know, mm -hmm. something else, just again, taking care of your body in non-food ways mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Right. You know? and, and when we do make what we would consider ourselves a mistake, you just step back and say, it's okay, I'm getting back on to the practice of taking care of who I am right now. Meaning, exactly. Yeah, meaning it's all right that that happened, nothing, nothing is going to, you know, the earth's not going to come to an end, it's mm -hmm. okay, be gentle with myself, and just begin again. Exactly, it's, it's what I call getting rid of that, I'll start on Monday syndrome, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Right. Uh, I've already goofed. I, I, you know, what the heck? I'll, I'll start again on Monday. Well, well, we don't have to wait till Monday. We don't have to <laughs> no. wait till Monday. You can, you can, you know, in in that next minute. Exactly. You can begin again. Exactly. Right now. And if you're feeling weak, the next morning, you know, if it's late at night, just stop it. Mm -hmm. Pray, love yourself. Do your nightly routine or whatever. Go to bed and wake up with that beautiful, um, inspired notion that you're going to to pick up where you left off 
I find that when I go to bed and meditate, and I meditate on、um, having a successful day the next day, not only of waking up bright and happy, and, but when I want to follow my of being, eating, or being who I need to be on a certain path so that I feel better, and I was struggling, I usually meditate at night personally, and then、mm-hmm. I wake up without any of those t y p e of cravings or. or、um, Counterproductive activities that, that would you know, sometimes stop us. I mean, everybody has their own, own way of, of dealing with it, but I just threw that in for fun. Well, that is fun. And one of the things that I do first thing in the morning is I have a rule that before my feet hit the floor,、mm-hmm. I start my day off with a smile. Oh, I love that. It's an easy thing to do, and try having a bad day after that. You know,、yeah. it, just, it just puts everything in perspective like, hey, here I am in the world, I'm going to have a great day.、Mm-hmm. And part of being、um, a beautiful woman is to wear that smile because it、right. shines from the inside out. And some people say, oh, but I'm not, I'm not beautiful, I'm not pretty. Yes, you are. You're beautiful. You're beautiful because your insides are beautiful and they shine forth. And who cannot? Recognize that and be a part of it. It's part of our feminine wiles and everything else. <laughs> right. Well, that's I, why I love so much the work that you do, Mia. It's, it thank just you. helps everybody just realize that beauty they have within. Thank you. I love that you said that you smile before you hit, your feet hit the floor. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try that. One thing that I do, <laughs> one thing that I do within, if I don't have to rush to the restroom, is, and I've trained myself because it's part of. My nutritional factor of accomplishing all my water intake is I have a full glass of water sitting by my bedside that I put there the night before. You know, of course, if I need it in the middle of the night, but it's there for me. And I wake up and I drink my 12 to 16 ounces of water because for me, eight ounces is not a glass. You know, I mean, technically, they're, they're bigger nowadays. And I'll drink my water down and then I'll, I'll hit the floor doing whatever I need to do. But it's, I love that you do that because. It shows that women are not so far apart. Right. That's great. I mean,、yeah. I think anytime you can just pick one, one little practice, even that, that makes you feel fabulous, it just perpetuates. You want more. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the, the meaning of understanding who we are as women. Right. Besides sugar and milk and wheat, what other tips that you can bring people? Towards your sites or、um, to interest them, to spur along that feminine beauty that we have that we're awakening as a, as a, a group of women right now? Well, I think a lot of it is just you know, learning to start where you are.、Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Anything, again, you can do to just start any one healthy practice、mm-hmm. will help. Perpetuate more. So, even like you said, you know, starting that morning off, the first thing I ask people to do is start your morning off with a glass of water and some lemon juice, say.、Mm-hmm. It, it's, you know, gives, first of all, gives you a glass of water、mm-hmm. that, you know, we also desperately need. The lemon gives you a little more alkalinity, which is what your body wants to be at.、Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just, and it gets kind of everything starting to move again. Right.、Um, you know, and maybe just do some nice movements in the morning for gratitude. Again, just starting your day off on the right foot.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, any little practices like that. And then I love to add things into people's lives, not take things away.、Mm-hmm. Because as you add in things, again, that are more beautiful, that serve you better, then, you know, those other things, you'll, you'll more likely just go, I don't need that anymore. You know, I have this now. I love this better. Right, right. I, li- I like that. Because. People are so afraid of letting go of things.、Right. But when they melt away because they're not needed anymore, that's. It's that's, beautiful. It is. It is. It's beautiful. Because we replace them with something that we love so much that touches us deeper. And that's what I love about the growth within me, which I see within you, and I see within my clients, and I see within my girlfriends, I see within everybody, is as we grow, the. This, the beauty that we feel, it becomes unstoppable. We can't, we can't stop. We, we need and want more. And that's what 
I want the whole world to feel is that is that beautiful empowerment of I am an awesome person because we all are. Right. And it's about, you know, just don't don't be settling for that mediocrity. That right. you know, that sort of low vibration of like, ah, oh, everything's just okay. Right. You know, that's not good enough. No. We can do better. We and deserve better. And I was reading on some of your stuff about about raising the vibration level and that is so important because if our vibration level isn't high enough, we are not well, we're not putting out to the world that it is because we're not feeling it. Right. You can't. You don't have enough to barely, you know, get yourself through the day, let alone help other people. Right. Because, and, and, and I'm not talking about all the things that we find busyness to do and all the things that everybody else needs us to do or thinks that we should do for them. Um, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not putting yourself out in the world. That's right. just, you know, kind of getting through the day with all that crazy myriad of stuff that mm-hmm. oftentimes doesn't even need to be done. Right. Right. Exactly. And when we do analyze, and we do have to, our life and, and format it out like a business. I, I tell people, or I used to tell people, now it just seems like it flows, but I used to tell my clients, your life is your business. And if you're not in tuned all the way like a business would be, you're not going to be successful. So create your life. Work it out. Draw it out. Right. Write it out. You know, I tell, also say, every day is my Saturday because that's supposed to be the best day of the week. Well, every day can be an enjoyable day. I, I, do I take the day off every single day and sit on the beach? No. But I can still feel just as amazing as I do working with clients uh, when I write, when we're doing interviews. I can feel just as amazing as I would spending the me time on the beach or walking in the, you know, in the hills or, or whatever it is. We can, we can project that out and make each moment that beautiful spot. And it's beautiful when we get in touch with ourselves like that because nothing wants to, we don't want anything to stop it. Exactly. I mean, why would you? Yeah. What are some, what are some ways that you like to raise your vibration level or that you like to share with? people to raise their vibrational level? Well, definitely, you know, finding those things that you love to do. Um, That's one of the reasons I'm creating myself, you know, um, a business and a life of living where I live now in Santa Monica, California, having that sunshine. Again, you're right. I've got a beach nine blocks away. Do I go there every day? Absolutely not. But the fact that it's right there, I can. I can get there when I want to. makes all the difference in the world to me. Um, So just And then taking that time for me, um, it can be as little as half an hour to an hour a day just to do something that you just, you know, need to maybe relax, pause, um, just feel special about doing. Right. You know, just getting outside, taking yeah. some good breaths there. Exactly. I do that sometimes at, at stoplights when I'm driving. It's, you know, I always have my music blasting because that mm-hmm. makes me feel good. But sometimes I'll just, I can't meditate at a stoplight, but at least if I'm doing the deep breathing in and out a couple times, you know, three, three to five, it, it sets the body and the mind in clarity automatically because we're used to it. And so we automatically tune ourselves again, which raises our vibration level. Right. Or five minutes of dance is yeah. perfect. <laughs> get up and dance. Right. If, if you, you know, some people are like, get up and dance. What are you talking about? Well, if you turn on the music that moves your soul and raises every vibration level in your body, there's nothing you can do. You can't stop yourself but get up and dance. Right. right. <laughs> I, I love that. Get up and dance. <laughs> There have been a lot of healings that I've heard of of women who have literally healed their bodies through um, coming, connecting with that sensual, um, sensual, sexual, vibrational level through dance, because it's very, very powerful, and that's what this, all this awakening the, the women um, to beauty is about: is to raise our vibration level so that we heal the entire body, the the temple, the inner, the outer, the hair. The, Right. I think anytime you just get more in tune with your body, you know, um, again, through food, through movement, uh, anything you can do to just be more aware of how you're feeling, how you're doing, you know, look at me, I'm moving, 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 but um, it just makes all the difference in the world 
to feeling more sensual as a woman. Right. Because we're meant to be that way. Yes. And I'm not talking about sex, per se. Right. I'm just talking about that, that feeling exactly. good in your body. Mm-hmm. And, and feeling all the elements. We have five senses. And if we're not viewing things as beautiful as we're walking around and how green the trees are and how red the rose is, we're not enjoying the beauty of that sense. If we're not listening, if we have hearing, if we're blessed to have hearing, and we're not listening to music, we're not listening fully to what somebody's saying, we're not enjoying that level of that sense. And if we're not tasting the food, even if it's food that you're not used to, that you're trying to cleanse yourself with, if you taste it and taste the, the, the lemon in the water, mm, and you get in touch with that feeling, that's the sensualness of a woman that you're talking about. That's the sensualness of life. That's mm-hmm. what awakens us and keeps us spurred and, and energetic in the touch of the feeling on the glass. And I could go on and on. Mindful and just um, taking right. time to enjoy those moments. Yes. And one of the things that I do, and this is a personal thing, but I encourage everybody that possibly can to do it, is walk through a farmer's market or a farm or a place where there's just beautiful food in a big array. There is nothing to me that makes more um, impact on how I want to eat. Mm-hmm. Like, I see that. Why mm-hmm. on earth would I want right. to pick up this cardboard box well, yes. And eat yes. from that. It, it, you know, just like, just makes sense. It, doesn't it foods also... Are, foods are beautiful. And doesn't it also get your inner child all excited to see, and you know that those are grown from the ground within yeah. a day or so? And right. that they're the beautiful array of colors, and, the, and they're, they also have flowers there, and sometimes people are actually making food for you from what's grown at the farmer's market, depending on how big your farmer's market is and where it is. Right. It, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's a beautiful thing to get in it's touch like with that. It's like a feast, a feast of sensuality, I yes. think. You know, that, and I'm a big color person, so seeing all those colors is like a kid in a candy store. Yes, yes. Because really not all of us can grow all of that ourselves in, our, right. in our garden because right. some of us don't even have the ground <laughs> outside to grow. So but even if you don't have a lot of ground, I encourage to, you know, get a little pot mm-hmm. and put an herb in it. They're pretty right. forgiving. You yeah. know, it ha- gives you one little thing that you can, yeah. you know, pick up the little pot and smell it, snip it, snip off and put it in your food. It, it's, it's, it's one sweet. little connection yeah. you can make to and the it, ground. And especially if you have children. Um, when my kids were little, and I'm sure mm-hmm. you did this too, was... I remember growing tomatoes, and my older son did not Mm -hmm. like tomatoes, just absolutely hated tomatoes. Ketchup, everything that included tomatoes, hated it. My younger son, when he was about two and a half, and the other one was four, when I grew these tomatoes, I remember putting fish emulsion in and and including the the children in the process, and in a day, literally, that, that tomato plant, when it was just transplanted, grew a foot. So they were so excited about the growth that they just started watching the tomatoes growing. Mm-hmm. And my older son kept saying, what is this, Mommy? What is this? And I said, because I knew he didn't like tomatoes, I said, it's God's fruit. It's sun fruit. And so <laughs> the younger one, he was so cute, he couldn't wait for them to turn red. He would pick them off at playtime and he'd eat the hard green <laughs> tomatoes because they were God's fruit. <laughs> I love that story. I mean, it, it melts my heart. You know, I can see my children playing. And, mm-hmm. and so you're right. The beauty of tasting what you're growing, even if you are an impetuous child and you can't wait for it to turn red <laughs> and ripen and you have to have it while it's green, I know that those boys love that fruit, you know, because tomatoes are fruit. But I know that they love that, you know, the, the freshness and growing it. And so if people can do that, with their children, it's beautiful, and for themselves, absolutely. and for the child within. Right, absolutely. I, I, I did the same. I had cherry tomato plants that I grew specifically for my daughter because she would eat them like candy. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you said, right off the vine, just whoosh, pop them in her mouth exactly. as quick as she could. Yeah. yeah, it was so fun. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. Our time is up, and your um, what, your information will be on, on the credits at the end. Okay. And I appreciate you joining me on, on this segment to... Awaken the beauty, the feminine beauty within us all. Thank you so much, Sharon. Such a pleasure. Thank you, Mia.
Thank you so much. And we'll see you all next week. Have a great week.